warm welcome to our presentation today on assistive technology peer mentoring, where we'll be discussing the experiences of a mentor and a mentee during the pilot of our program. My name is Kate Martinez, and I am the peer support lead and occupational therapist with ATCHA. And our presentation today is being held here on the lands of the Wadjuk people of the Nuna Nation. And I wish to acknowledge them as the traditional owners. I also would like to pay my respects to their elders past, present, and emerging. Okay, so first a little about ATCHAT. So ATCHAT is a peer-led, co-designed community for assistive technology users to share information about their lived experience of AT. Our objective is simple. It's to increase the capability and confidence of people with disability to make AT decisions through access to peer support and peer-led information. We do this through two pathways. One is of peer-led information and the other is through peer support. Our peer-led information is in the form of videos such as ATMEs and co-apps, as well as articles and blogs. Our peer support is through our hosted um, Facebook group called Chatterbox, which has, which has over a thousand members. We are currently in the process of building an online portal, which is to give AT users the opportunity to access e-learning modules and an AT navigator but a bit more on that later. AtChat defines co-design as a collaborative program delivered in equal and reciprocal relationships between service users and service professionals and their support networks. Consumer involvement is transformed from being informed and consulted to, to more active roles of co-design co-production, co-delivery of service. A Living Labs approach was used to co-design and develop and implement the peer mentoring program. Okay, so ATCHAT used the Living Labs co-design methodology of exploration, experimentation and evaluation to develop the peer mentoring program. We wanted to use an inclusive approach to finding out what good looks like in AT. And this was done by ensuring AT users, AT experts and practitioners, and the wider community were part of the design, development, and review, all with the focus of getting the best possible outcome for the service user. Our early exploration work began with user surveys, focus groups, and think tanks. This process explored the current state of AT service delivery. The innovation of a future state of a peer support mentor as a valued role within AT service delivery was presented. This was received with overwhelming support from all stakeholders. The key theme identified in the exploration phase was that users wanted less jargon and a more easy to understand way of accessing AT. Think tanks were held to translate traditional AT service delivery steps into terminology that reflected the voice of the AT user. As seen here on this slide, the initiate phase was translated to connect the assessment and solutions sections became create, and procurement, implementation, and follow-up and review transformed into control. The think tanks also identified that AT users, um, sorry, the think tanks also identified the roles of AT users, practitioners, service providers, and suppliers within the AT traditional service delivery. It also recognised how a peer mentor role could complement service delivery. With AT becoming more accessible through online shopping and big box 
stores, the ANT community strongly identified the need to consider the safety and risks of AT to AT users. Co-design with the AT community defined the scope of peer mentors and the important role of allied health professionals in our AT service delivery. Through this process, a shared understanding about the sliding scale of complexity, roles and referral was developed. This is illustrated on the slide. As AT risks increase, the need for allied health input is required. Okay, the experimentation and evaluation stages run parallel to each other and it began with user-driven prototyping sessions to identify how the community would like to connect with mentors and what delivery method would be offered. The following sessions confirmed that 80 users wanted an online service accessed through a portal with a preferred, were the preferred methods for this service delivery. The online approach allowed for the peer mentors Peer Mentor Solution to be launched and tested remotely as a pilot in 2020 through the start of COVID-19. During the Living Labs process, our model of AT peer support was created. So the model was co-designed using data gathered from the exploration stage. Contributions and evaluations with pilot participants, 80 community members, including an accessibility consultant and our university research partner, Dr. Natasha Layton. Pre and post evaluations were conducted with participants and work and weekly supervision sessions were held with peer mentors. The model seeks to use peer support to build confidence and capability for individuals to make AT decisions, to live, play and work. It does this by providing a holistic and personalised support that is person driven by ATs. Harnessing the unique perspective of lived experience of the AT user, as well as using the process of connect, create and control. It provides opportunities for AT users to make informed decisions about their AT needs. We've recently published the findings of our co-design work undertaken in partnership with our Chatterbox community and with Dr. Natasha Layton to the Disability and Rehabilitation Assistive Technology Journal. The article co-creating an assistive technology peer, peer support community learnings from ATCHAT is an open access article and you can find the link to it on our website or through our social media pages. So I'd like to introduce one of our mentors and mentees who are part of our pilot program. The photo shows um, our mentor Clint and our mentee Danielle. Danielle has a background in community services and is a passionate advocate with a wealth of knowledge for solutions for people with lived experience. She loves, she likes to, she, sorry, <coughs> she likes, she often says she has to creatively think about how to make things more accessible. Clint, our mentor, is motivated to find solutions himself and for others he meets along his journey. As a peer mentor, Clint undertook person-centered training with our team and participated in supervision with our occupational therapist. He likes to share his journey of his experience as a person with paraplegia. first stage we'll look at is connect. The connect is the start of that peer support journey. The program connects AT users with an AT peer mentor who gets to know the AT user, their life and their goals. It explores how AT solutions can support a person to live their life. When Danielle was asked why connect with a peer mentor, she replied, to get new ideas, 
of 18 and how that may help with my day-to-day -day life. Danielle described her experiences of the Connect stage as with COVID restrictions, it meant all communication was virtual. And I explained that I was looking for a solution to independently turn off my smoke alarm, which would go off often when I was cooking. Once we started talking, it felt like two peers problem solving. Um, Cliff described his experience of the connect stage. I just asked some simple questions to gauge Danielle's ability and her technical knowledge so we could discuss solutions that we both felt would be suitable. The next part is the create stage. This is where the AT user and AT peer mentor evaluate and compare current AT supports and services. They set a goal and make a plan together. This plan may include seeking further allied health support. This slide represents this stage with Danielle expressing, it was friendly, relaxed, and my responses were listened to. Danielle continued to say, Cliff understood my needs from his personal experience and also took into consideration the aesthetic of the AT as I was mindful of this having an effect on the resale of my house. He took into consideration and provided me with options and information which allowed me to make a choice. Clint described his experience of this stage as, with my background in IT and, and the security industry, it gave me an understanding of a range of products that might be suitable this, in addition to my lived experience of disability and AT, gave me a clearer understanding of what may be suitable for Danielle. After chatting through home automation and remote isolation options, I ended up suggesting a wall switch. So the final stage is control. And this is where the AT user is encouraged to take ownership of their AT journey. AT users are supported to develop their knowledge and experience to solve, experience to have control and choice in who and how they will be supported to find an AT solution. Danielle reflected, it was a really informative process. I found it more useful and practical than many previous AT discussions. Danielle described the stage as, I felt in control of the process the whole time and was an equal contributor. It was very person-centered and I was able to consider my desire for an aesthetic design and I was as equally as its functional requirements. Clint's suggestion of an off-the-shelf product such as the wall switch met both of these needs. Clint described his peer mentor experience as, overall, I feel this program has been designed around sharing a lived experience of AT and around the process of deciding what will work best. It's not focused on people using the exact same AT or even having a similar disability. It's peers connecting and working together to find an AT solution. So evaluation is the final stage of the Living Labs to measure the potential impact and added value created by the innovation. Some key findings from the pilot were that participants had identified an increased opportunity to access unbiased information about AT, had demonstrated choice and control following the pilot regarding their AT decision making, they reported feeling more empowered to independently source information and to make informed AT decisions. They also demonstrated improved general self-efficacy, motivation and belief in their ability to overcome challenges and achieve their AT goals following the pilot. So 
So from best practice to next practice, based on an independent implementation evaluation, key implications were identified for next practice. The pilot provided positive indicative evidence about the value of peer support from the perspective of peer mentors, ATU users, and the knock-on benefits for service systems. Having ATU users involved actively in the program design and delivery brings a range of positive outcomes and possibilities in the way services are delivered. It highlighted the need for an increased emphasis on work ready skills for peer mentors, as well as embedding a community of practice with allied health prof professionals. And that AG users have a substantial untapped potential to contribute to the AG workforce in paid roles, which can bring tangible outcomes for AG users, health professionals, and service providers and for society. So what's next? The iterative Living Labs process led to the peer mentoring program evolving into the A2 navigation program. The word navigate means to travel on a desired course after planning a route. The word facilitate means to make things less difficult. The AT Navigator works in partnership with the AT user to facilitate the process of finding an AT solution through planning. AT users are empowered to take control of the knowledge they gain, build their capability and confidence, and to act upon the AT information and apply it to their individual circumstances. These actions may also include seeking further support or assessment from allied health professionals, completing further research prior to purchasing an AT product or system, and discussing trading options or funding applications with service providers and funders. Right, so as mentioned earlier, we are currently building an app chat portal, which will act as a central platform for where AT users can collate and store their AT information. This will be information from the AT that they use in their day-to-day, -day, as well as their team of people who they work with, with their AT. It can also be used as a way to schedule their maintenance schedules as well, products. In addition, users will also have the opportunity to increase their AT decision-making capabilities through accessing peer-led information modules and the learning through a learning management system. And for more personalized AT guidance, the portal will facilitate the AT Navigator program, which will result in the user receiving an AT information pack that will assist them in reaching their AT goals. Overall, the App Chat portal will provide users a central hub to store their AT journey and increase their AT knowledge. Thank you so much for all attending the presentation. If you'd like to know more about the AT Navigation Program or stay up to date with the development of the portal, please feel free to visit our website. Um, I was part of the AT Peer Mentor um, Pilot and it was a really, really positive thing got to say it was absolutely crazy doing it right as COVID struck, um, but it was a very positive experience. Great. So um, at the front we have, we actually do have one of the mentors who were part of the program um, and she's just commented on what that was like for her as a mentor, all while doing the program and the pilot during the crazy COVID situation. I think it was, we had just done our training sessions together and then the following week we went into lockdown for three months so it was quite a crazy time. But if we could do it successfully then we can do it successfully when things reopen much easier. So. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So I think that's where the power of, of that program was, was that it was able to be delivered remotely 
um, and it was accessible for, for quite um, a lot of people. And that was actually in a lot of feedback we had from mentees as well, that it was an opportunity where we could have people who were interstate also be part of the pilot as well.